afternoon, folks. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. You can tell the camera's shaking a little bit. It's got nothing to do with the wind. You can see the trees aren't moving. Um, it's been a little dirty off and on for this one. Guys are in the back. Can you see that? Look how dark that is. Black as coal. Yeah. And this one's been showing signs of going dirty every so often. But this back one has been mostly off and on. Yeah, being black. Um, some of the... Oh, they've got a bird there. Some of the monitors... Uh, yeah, once again, I'm not getting to uh, download data. Makes you wonder what they are showing. Let me show you something. I tried downloading data from five different monitors. Down here is West Thumb, which was turned off until maybe, what, a half an hour ago. Above it is Moose Creek, Idaho. Um, that's been off until about an hour ago. Above it is Denny Creek, and then I got Mary Lake and um, Yellowstone Lake. But I'm going to start out with West Thumb. This might be why they shut it down for a while. It might be why uh, Maple Creek is shut down. Look at this data. Look at the magma coming up all through here. Yeah, look at the heat, the gases, the steam. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Oops, let me go back there. Yeah, all right. And it's all marked in red. Um, so they know this was going on. And it's probably why, in my opinion, why they shut it down. And then here, we also got this here. Let's take a look at the seismic signature. Pop, 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 pop. Now, West Thumb is the area where back in 2011, they did a scenario where there's multiple earthquakes and then a hydrothermal eruption um, in the middle of the lake creating a tsunami. Let's go back to this one here. Look at that. And we'll look at the spectrogram again. Yeah. Um, right here and here, it got so loud that the monitor wouldn't pick it up. It was screaming. Want to know about screaming volcanoes? Look up Redoubt there in Alaska. That's when it was first discovered. So this is when they shut it down. Uh, let's see what it was showing. Uh, I'll go here. Look at the line of melt. So more likely they had an earthquake, which is up over here. This one also shows up on um, Yellowstone um, borehole there by the fishing bridge. Um, yeah, we had an earthquake that probably started all this. A crack, kind of like Hawaii where they get cracks. And um, the, the magma finds a channel to come up through the ground. Yeah, all right, let me try and find the right lines here for this stuff. And then we got some drum beats. Drum beats, okay. I got a better example for you. I'll show you that in a minute. Is where, think of it as a hose. And you're kinking the hose. Bending it and then opening up, letting the water through. Fold it up again so the water can't go through. What's going on when this happens with these drum beats? Um, the heat from the magma is melting the rock and slowly coming up. And then it reach, reaches a point where it can't melt it. Rock don't all melt at the same temperature. And then finally it reaches that temperature and it melts. So that's what the drum beats mean. So then it rises up a little bit farther and then it stops again with a harder rock and then melts that and then comes up more and more. Over here we got some little before this. Let's see if I can find it. It looks like that's the point where there was. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. We'll go to the seismic signature. This is right. Will it show me? It went, I hate it when it goes small on me. Okay, there you go. So we got some little drum beats here. Some popping of the ground. Pop, 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 pop. All these marked in red means a message was sent 
to the uh, geologist probably there at the University of Utah. Yeah, we got another quake. So they got the message and they started looking at it and said, well, we'll just shut it down. So that's that quake there and I'll pull it over. And then we got this one here. Looks like it went small to me. That's deep. That's really deep. Okay, and then we got another little one right here before all this stuff started. I wanted to take another look at the live stream. Yeah, see that's dirty. And then this goes off and on to being black as coal. Now this is all on the side of the Firehole River where the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome is. Mal um, Yellowstone's got two resurgent domes. They got the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome and the Mallard Creek. And if it wasn't for the steam, you could see the line of dead trees. But we got some here in the um, the front that you can see. They all died off from the roots up. I mean, they grew just like the other trees. And then um, the gases started coming up. Probably a fracture in the ground that allowed the different toxic gases to kill off those trees. So 1052... For this earthquake it's got a little bit of a P wave on it and that comes in as a magnitude 1.75 at 1052 universal time I wanted to check first um, how many earthquakes that USGS is reporting today and we got five uh, mammoth Wyoming that's up by uh, Yellowstone Lake it's not really mammoth but they're calling that shallow 2.1 miles in depth Stanley, Idaho, a 1.6. That's not the time. Uh, 2.7. And yeah, you can see there's nothing listed for that time. Once again, I'm looking for 1052. Okay, so let's see. 1.6. Um, yeah, that's shallow again. 2.7 miles again. Remember, um, I've talked about how the magma comes up all the way from the Gulf of California crosses the United States come up to uh, the area the plume which is you know by Yellowstone Lake and then it travels west under the ground okay and then we got Kelly Wyoming over here a 1.1 a 1.0 Virginia City Montana right there and then a 2.4 for Stanley, Idaho, uh, 3.5 miles in depth. All right, so we got 1046. It's off by a couple of minutes. I thought it was about the same time. 1046, we got an earthquake here. This is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. It only shows earthquakes activity that occurs very deep under the ground, um, between 500 and 600 feet deep. And this is a shallow earthquake very shallow earthquake i was able to get all the data from um the borehole and let me bring this down okay and this is oh, that's a good size one 1432 there's supposed to be an earthquake at 1431 a magnitude 0 0.6 oh my goodness we got Crazy monkeys and flying pigs going on. Here we got the Yellowstone River. I talked about the monitor that I'm sh currently showing you. Uh, which is over here by the fishing bridge. Okay, 0 0.6. Here is the monitor. Let's see how far that is. I know it's not very far. I'll probably throw a rock at it and hit it maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, um, maybe not. 2.43 miles. Can you see that? That earthquake comes in uh, as a 1.49 at least. I shortened up the signature because it should have probably gone on a little bit farther. It was still rattling. I don't know if you can see it there, but it was still rattling. 1.49. They're saying it's a 0 0.6. And you can see it's got a little bit of a P wave, not much. Like I said, this is the borehole the monitor for Yellowstone Lake.
2.1 miles in depth. Like I said, it's it's shallow. Yeah, the magma came up in pulses. You can see that there. Yeah, before the ground popped. Yeah, and then we got a couple more little ones right here. We got another one that's probably just as shallow. Let's look at the signature. I'll have to make that bigger for you. It went little. Yeah, probably same location. And then we got another one. Okay. Yep, same depth. Probably 2.1 miles um, deep. That would be in the upper magma chamber. You can see the little pulses here. We'll go back to this one. See that? So let me pull this down a little bit. And we're going to take a look. You can see how the uh, signature, the signals change from up here to this pulsating looking stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's just going. Yeah, look at that. Let's go to the the line of melt fairly deep like I said this is the area where the plume for Yellowstone comes up and reaches semi close to the surface Yellowstone is not erupting there's been videos put out showing um, what people are claiming is lava moving underneath the ground that is not lava but that's fake videos of um, a coal mine um, in Pennsylvania where the ground is on fire under um, the ground there in Pennsylvania from all the, the different pockets of coal. So don't fall for that. Oh, here, look at that. That's a nice line of melt right there. And I've talked about how there's different areas of melt um, where people are walking only 600 feet under the ground. So this is why sometimes they shut down the roads in the past or different pathways um, because it gets so hot and then of course you got the toxic fumes don't want people passing out and dropping dead like um, those buffalo did a few years back I don't know how many of you have seen images of that of the dead buffalo that um, the gases came up and they dropped dead right where they were grazing Actually, it wasn't a couple years back. This is in 2004. I got one image saved. And they were in this gully or a small valley indented. indented, um, And the gas came up. And this whole herd that was grazing together. Yeah, they just dropped dead. March 11, 2004. Norris Geyser Basin, South View. I'll give you a link to this page. It is from USGS. Now, this is um, an image of dead animals um, there in what they call Death Gulch. This is an image that they posted that was from 100 years ago, but this happens all the time. Here on their uh, page, it says, Five dead bison were discovered in Yellowstone Norris Geyser Basin. Strangely, the bison... Uh, lacked markings. Let me pull this over. Let me get this to move. Lack markings on their bat body that would suggest that they were attacked by predators. But based on the positions of their bodies, it appeared that the animals had died suddenly and as a group. Just dropped over dead. Gases emitted from Yellowstone hydrothermal areas are composed mostly of water vapor and harmless gas. However, other gases are poisonous to people and animals when presented in certain conditions and are found within these emissions. Carbon dioxide is a colorless and odorless gas, while hydro hydrogen sulfide is colorless, flammable, and has a distinct odor of rotten egg smell. Both gases are heavier than air, in most circumstances, wind will dilute carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide to low concentrations that does not threaten the health of people and animals. In certain very stable atmospheric conditions, though, these relatively heavy gases can accumulate in low-lying areas 
and pose a serious threat. In the case, likely um, in 2004, when the dead bison were found in Norris Geyser Basin after an unusually cold and still night. These specific circumstances likely allowed the gases to build up near the ground surface to concentrate that were lethal to the grazing animals. Now, according to the Bozeman Daily Chronicle, two adults, two calves, and a yearling were found lying on their side with their feet perpendicular to their bodies. The announcement said the unusual per position of the carcass indicated that the bison died very rapidly of a group. They just fell right over on their side where they stood. Luckily, it says, humans can easily detect the gas at levels as low as one part per million and are able to escape an area well before it reaches a toxic level, the Park Service said. Here's another image of the location. It wasn't just one little spot. It was spread out over an area. Here we have bison calf number one, bison adult number three, bison adult number two, two bison yearling that's number four and another bison calf so yeah somewhere down we're down here in this pool somewhere up along the side of the bank it looks like on march 10th 20, uh, 2004 bear management personnel noticed an unusually grouping and position of bison carcasses near the norris geyser basin on march 11th uh, National uh, Yellowstone National Park geologists joined bear management biologists Travis Wyman and Susan Chin to investigate the five bison along the Gibson River. So we got the Gibson River and downstream of multiple gas vents. Areas with multiple gas vents are associated with thermally baked ground minimum vegetation because it kills off all the vegetation like the trees and sulfur deposits multiple gas vents occur uphill from where the bison carcass on both sides of the gibson river i'm pronouncing it wrong it's gibbon river and we got the gibbon geyser basin area so yeah somewhere in this location is where they found those dead bison. Let me bring this out. Give you an idea where the location is. Okay, it's close. Well, over here is the other resurgent dome. That is the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. And this is an area, oh, where I call it Grizzly Fault, where they've had multiple, multiple earthquakes in this location. Yeah, so somewhere over here is where they found the dead buffalo, or bison. I guess bison is the, the proper name. So we got, let's see, some different trails in this location, too. We got some pictures. Let's see, what's this show? Yeah, okay, that's, um, if I can bring it down, nope. Okay. One picture there. We got another image here. And there's the river. And we got another image. Yeah, showing the uh, bison out there in the field along the river. So I thought I'd check the camera. It looks like they're waiting for Old Faithful to go off. And that's a little dirty too, but not as bad as what I've seen it in the past black as coal so i'll wait a minute because supposedly it's going to go off and look at all the people oops i paused it sorry yeah look at all the people well for now it's only doing a little smoking um it was supposed to go off like two minutes ago but they give it a plus or minus of 10 minutes It's supposed to go off at uh, 4.08. It's now 4.10. Oh, we got a little gusher. Okay, yeah, see how dirty that is? It'll clear up when the water starts coming up more. We'll see if it's going to be a, 
large eruption or a small eruption could have meant that um, not as much water went into the system it took longer for the water to go into the system not too high right now you know there was a time where they thought that Yellowstone um, was drying up it has dried up in the past um, where it didn't erupt as much as it's supposed to it goes off now about every 90 minutes where before, I believe, uh, the earthquake at Hedgen Lake, it used to go off about every 60 minutes. Yeah, that is a definitely short, very short, small amount of water coming up. The people are going to be disappointed. It's not very large, is it? Yeah. And it's not dirty because of the shadow, because you can see the steam. Let me pull it over. The steam is um, up here that's dirty, is above yeah, the plume. Look at that. See that? How dirty that is? Yeah. Yellowstone ever decides to go up. It's up to God to decide when he's going to do it. And it's definitely going to change life here on Earth. Yeah globally yeah globally not just here in the united states but globally yeah who knows how long those um the sulfur dioxide and different things different gases would remain up in the atmosphere and who knows how long the eruption would last they're saying they're hoping that the next eruption would be um mount saint helen's size actually a little bit larger yeah, that is a disappointing eruption. I'm not surprised. We've got a lot of changes going on there at Yellowstone. Yeah, they're zooming in. I noticed, too, all oh, the camera pause. There we go. Keeps pausing. I noticed, too, that um, the ground there where um, the water comes out, it looks like it had dropped a little bit. So it could be an indication that the ground there um, is becoming more unstable. And if that happens and it collapses, you wouldn't have Old Faithful anymore. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope we don't have um, changes like that in our lifetime. But it is recharging. It is a super volcano. It's about 35 miles wide by about 55 miles long. And they would definitely see it from the space shuttle. Um, that gas line that blew up recently, I don't remember where that was. But they actually saw that and took pictures of it um, from the space shuttle. Yeah. So anyways, that's all I have for you right now. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions. Um, I was going to go into the other monitors, but just more of the same. Please like, please share, please subscribe. Always be prepared for any type of disaster. It could be a tornado or adverse weather, flooding, um, earthquakes, uh, fire. Yeah, always be prepared. Have a bug out kit, extra food and water and medicine, things like that. Please stay safe and I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.